I've used Claude AI to create content that sounds just like me, appeals to my ideal client avatar, and gets hundreds, if not thousands of views. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how I do it step by step. So sit back, relax, grab a pen and pencil, paper, digital notes, whatever you want, as I walk you through my entire system of creating content. But before we do that, let's talk about who this applies to and who this doesn't apply to. So if you're someone who's never created content before, if you're someone who doesn't have a particular style that they'd like to express themselves in, this video might be helpful for you, but it's not going to change your life. Because we're going to be applying the fundamental rule of Gigo when it comes to any technology, meaning garbage in, garbage out. So whatever the inputs you give it is the output you can expect. And so the inputs here are going to comprise of you, your avatar, your content, your style, your rules, so on and so forth. With that said, let's jump into what my workflow looks like, what sort of content you can expect to create, what sort of views it's going to get, who's going to message you, and what should happen for that person to immediately DM you to want to work with you. So this is my Claude dashboard, and there's, this is a project within Claude. And this one has been designed to create long-form content for me, whether it's a Facebook post or a Twitter thread or a LinkedIn post. Now, there's a couple of critical things on the right-hand side that you'll see. First of all, it's got my high-performing top 50 Facebook posts. Posts that I know work well, posts that carry my unique signature, unique style, so on and so forth, have been proven to do well in the past, have gotten thousands of people commenting, engaging, reaching out to work with me. The next thing it has similar to that is my client avatar. And let me give you an example of what a bad client avatar and a good client avatar is. So a bad client avatar is gonna be, I help women from 20 to 50 years old lose 20 pounds of weight in three months. Very generic, very vague, it doesn't say anything except very surface level descriptions, meaning women, age, and desire to lose weight. That's it. And so in my program, there's three types of avatars that I work with, three very distinct, very individual types of people. And like I said, Gigo. So the better data you feed into it, the better your output you're gonna be. What my avatar looks like is the three personas are Performance Pete, Spiritual Jane, and Hardworking Harry. Uh, I look at their beliefs, what they think, what holds them back, what their goals are, what their personality, are they introverted, extroverted, married, without kids, with kids, aggressive, what their challenges are, hitting 10k a month, taking time out, what their background family dysfunction is, what their traumas are, what their values are, this is very important values, what their likes are, what their dislikes are, what their fears are what their coping mechanisms are, what their info sources are, so on and so forth. And essentially the reason I'm sharing this with you is that the more in depth you go about your avatar, the more pristine, the more amazing Claude will be in terms of not just creating things for you, but also guiding you in terms of what's gonna resonate with your people and what's not. The third thing is the guidelines. And I've given guidelines based on how I tend to create what it needs to watch out for, what sort of attention should be given to the title, what sort of attention to the hook, if a picture is being used, what the picture should look like, how people scan, so on and so forth. Whatever your depth of understanding your audience is, is what this will go into. And finally, the wrongest possible prompt that people give their AI is, and I'll give you an example of a bad prompt. A bad prompt is, create a piece of content around why women in their 30s need to lose weight. A bad, bad surface level. You haven't given it any idea on what to do. And here's where people go wrong. That's why social media right now is full of generic looking, copy pasted, bad content that nobody pays attention to. So your prompt needs to be well thought out, not just in terms of the data you feed it and who you are, but also in terms of who's going to read it, what the concept needs to be, what the output needs to look like, and what the AI is acting as. So to give you an example, my prompt here is you're an AI model acting as a second brain, world-class copywriter, and me designed to create content for Facebook. Your role is to transform, because I think in concepts, your role is to transform what the writing should look like, the post, so on and so forth. Pretty comprehensive prompt. Now, why, is, why have I done this? The reason for this is because I think in terms of concepts, meaning I get off a coaching call, I see a pattern in my people. In fact, I'll show that to you. I see a pattern in my people. I want to create content about it. All I want to do is pick up my phone, drop a voice note to Claude and be like, hey, here's a concept. I want to talk about it as myself in my words using my style. Go. And it does everything for me. So there's two ways I primarily do this. One of them is just an idea, something I noticed, and I immediately drop a voice note. The other way is I pick a transcript 
from one, two, three, five calls. And I put that into AI and I tell it, pick the patterns that people are facing or pick this one particular pattern that I want to talk about and create a piece of content. And so let me show you an example of what that looks like. Here's a transcript of two calls I did uh, earlier in the week and essentially the whole transcript. And then I say I'm, a, I'm attaching a transcript I had and I'm looking at the overarching patterns that showed up on the call. And one of them is both of them are high level empaths, right? Because I know what I want to create content around. It's about empaths and the problems they have, so on and so forth. And so for the transcripts, what I often do is I go to Notebook LM and I drop the transcripts there from my coaching session and ask it to look for patterns. And here it identified a pattern for me, which is common problems faced as empaths, absorbing negative energy, difficulty with boundaries, self-doubt, overthinking, need for processing, recharging. I take this and I copy the whole thing and then I go to Claude. In Claude, I attach the transcript and then I attach the entire note about the challenges they were having. And then we get cracking. And as you can see, Claude starts spitting out content in my style. Then I say, give me two more options. And then the two options, I go through the two options. I like some things I don't. I ask it to combine the whole thing, to make it punchier in my sound, uh, so on and so forth. And the end result is when empaths build seven figure businesses, they face a unique problem. The same thing, we hit insights. It's been seen by 530 people so far. And we've successfully taken an excerpt from a coaching call, a pattern that my current clients, who are my ideal clients, are facing, transmuted that in my style, in my words, in my philosophy, to an output that's going to resonate with more people. And it clearly is resonating with my audience. That's one way. The other way is what if I don't want to use a transcript? What if I just have an idea on the fly and I want to capture that? Let me share what that looks like with you. So here's another prompt in Claude where I've again attached my doc of the way I write. And then I'm saying keeping my style in mind and choice of words, be a world-class copywriter using my style, using the 50 posts that sounds just like me, etc, etc, etc. And all of this is a concept that I gave a voice note to. And I said, here's the concept, here's where they're going wrong, here's the mistake they're made, making, go create something about this in my style. And it gets cracking. And then it creates one piece. I say, expand more on the part about the bold brand blueprint. That's something we help people develop in Record Breaker, give me more titles. And before we know it, done. Now let me show you what the end product looks like. This is the post, November 27th. Bull brand blueprint. It's been seen by about 500 people so far, 38 comments. Now let's take a look at how this results in inbound. And so this is November 27th. And on the same day, November 28th, someone reaches out to me and says, I'd like to talk to you about your, your route to clients. And they end up booking a call with me. This is the potential and the beauty of Claude. It understands me. It understands the person I'm speaking with. It understands the things they like and they're attracted to. And it also understands how to present it in a manner that's highly digestible and attractive to my people. Now, we've covered two things. One is ideation, meaning coming up with an idea from the transcript. We've covered creation, which is literally turning that idea into a piece of content. Now let's talk about something which is incredible and mind blowing. And here's where real true AI power comes in, where it starts acting as a second brain and helps me check to what level is this going to perform. And this pretty much is the predictability aspect. Like everybody on the planet wants to predictably know how their content's going to do, not just in terms of views and likes, but in terms of inbound people coming in. And this is where Claude comes in once again. This is a concept that I was working on for my IPs and for developing a VSL. Again, act as a second brain, review these things, blah, blah, blah. These are the five terms that I gave it. These are my IPs. Magnetic marketing is our way of creating highly polarizing marketing. Polarizing meaning doesn't mean being offensive. It just means attracting super hyper qualified, ready to buy people versus anyone and everyone. And also repelling and just uh, demagnetizing the people that we, we don't want to be wasting time on calls with. That's called magnetic marketing, perfect prospect, hyper qualified people. Anyway, point being, I was developing names for my IPs and it gave me a bunch of names and that's fine. This is boring. Any AI can do this. Then I get into based on the avatar, which ones would resonate with them more. It tells me which ones would resonate with them. It analyzes all of them, picks the winners. Then I tell it, hey, should I change my existing terms for the recommended ones or leave them as is? This is a, it's a pretty big deal. I'm asking AI 
to check whether I'm smarter or it's smarter. Now, it's a weird question, but we always ask it for recommendations under the assumption that we're stupid, it's smarter. I was like, but well, hold on, what if my thing is better? Like I did the right job, I know my people better than you. And so I asked it to check and this is what blew my mind. So it analyzed them and at the end it says, overall, keep four out of your current terms and consider changing only ethical sales framework to trust transformation technique. This was incredible. So it reaffirmed what I suspected all along that my terms are better and would resonate with my people. So I didn't just end up changing my IP based on what AI told me, but it also gave me the logic and the rationale. Similarly, for another piece of content that I was creating, it became too complex and confusing. That was my gut instinct. Like this is getting too complicated. People might not understand it because I was mixing like two concepts into one flow. I fed it into Claude and I said, look at this, keeping in mind my style, me, my people, my avatar and the human attention span. And tell me, is this too confusing for people? Because that's a problem I tend to have sometimes. I might even be doing it in this video, confusing you. And it looked at it and it told me what I suspected all along. It said, Yaya, this piece of content is a little too confusing for people because you're, you're combining two concepts into one. So maybe consider creating two separate pieces for each one of these. And that's incredible. That's the second brain. And then the last thing is grunt work. And so to give you an example of what grunt work looks like, I have a project called YouTube Script Extractor. So essentially what I'm looking to do is extract. So we've got my writing style. We've got my content guidelines. We've got my avatar. Now we need to feed it my speaking style. So the way I do that is I pick my top 10 highest performing videos off of YouTube and I feed it to Claude to clean up the transcripts and make them easily readable. And so here's what the transcript looks like. There's numbers, 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 so on and so forth, 10 of these. And here's what the end result looks like. There we go. It just converts it into a simple, easy to read video transcript. I use this for grunt work like this. I use it for taking long form content, converting it into short form content, keeping in mind that, you know, long form on Facebook looks very different from long form on LinkedIn, which looks very different from, let's say a thread on X or threads. And so for example, to give you an idea, when I tweet or when I create a thread, every piece of that thread creates an is skimmable, meaning readable by itself, and also creates intrigue to go to the next one, which is one of the fundamentals of Twitter X or threads, meaning you want people to keep reading. So keeping Gigo in mind, a lot depends on the richness and the robustness of the data you feed it to begin with. The next thing is the clarity of the prompt you give it, meaning what it's supposed to do, who it's for, what it's supposed to reference, and what the output needs to look like. So for example, in a long form piece of content for Facebook or LinkedIn, the entire piece looks different from the same piece of content on Twitter or threads. So let me show you. Here's the Facebook post that I talked about where we helped a fitness coach make $19.6,000 in a day. It's formatted in a particular manner to appeal to have continuity for Facebook. And then on threads, here's the same thing. It's formatted from the point of view of getting them to move to the next one. So you have endless content ideas to showcase you. So you naturally stand out and it keeps clickability there. See the difference, so on and so forth. So like I said, a lot depends on the inputs and you can have incredible outputs. I hope this video helps you. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me which one of the four, meaning ideation, execution or creation, second brain or grunt work, you think is going to be most useful for you. I've attached the most useful prompts for you down below. I'm out of here. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.